Hello YouTube and welcome to Gromforks KSP Mod Spotlight. Today we will be previewing yet another wonderful mod from the forum, use, forum user RoverDude and developer and the, it will be USI Mailmoot Rover. Uh, the USI Mailmoot Rover is actually I believe third in the row uh, from the rover dude, the first one being the small pack rat rover that may, maybe some of you won't remember. Second one is the its bigger brother, Caribou Rover, and the third one being the Mailmoot Rover, which is this awesome piece of work that you are able to see me driving with a wonderful IVA cabin. Now, the Mailmoot rover is primarily envisioned as an exploration rover, allowing you to land on various bodies like, I don't know, Duna, Moon, Lathe, wherever your heart desires and do some exploration and as such does provide another science equipment and did we just say it looks beautiful. Anyway, uh, looking at this rover you can also use it to set up bases as you can see like small mobile base on the top of lathe and one fantastic thing is that it is able to fit in the mark 3 cargo bay which i found just awesome as you can see in this small rover getting out at the uh, airstrip anyway it is fantastic form factor makes it highly usable uh, also deploying it with planes. A, vi a wide assortment of these rovers will actually help you uh, in terms of deciding whatever you might want to do with it. It will suit any purpose as you can see. Now, comparing it to its bigger brother, the Mailmoot rover, uh, you can see that the or to this bigger brother caribou you can see it's that it's roughly one half of the size of the caribou and once um, half to like maybe two thirds maybe so it is fairly smaller and in length you can choose any length that you want now this one is designed to fit in the mark three uh, cargo bay while the Caribou, I believe, is originally designed to be able to fit the, the uh, 2.5 meters. And as you can see, when you fold in the wheels, it becomes even more narrow, making it able to fit. Now, the Caribou Rover is more intended for like base construction, base building, while this one is more intended for the exploration. Both of them look very nice. I just found the uh, Mail Moot Rover to be a little bit uh, more suited to my playstyle and because I like planes, I like space planes and I like deploying stuff with planes but uh, then again it's a matter of personal choice and style. Uh, that being said, let us take a brief look at all of the wonderful parts that the uh, Mail Moot Rover provides. Starting left to right and the bottom we have a small rover wheel which is a small I believe uh, which is whose on original intention is if you want to fit it in the uh, Mark III cargo bay you will need to put this bad boy Mailmoot mini wheel it has all the wheel feels that you want from a rover wheels and then we have the modular wheel and that's the foldable wheel that you can actually fold in and fold out uh, also when landing, when it's folded, it is a little bit harsher and acts as a strut. So, I think it's a very, very good to know. It has also a beautiful IVA cabin, as you saw. And then we have the rear airlock. The air, rear airlock also comes with, equipped with awesome ladder in case your kerbals need to climb up which I found it's really, really cool. Uh, so let's fold these ladder back and then you have the Mailmoot uh, 
tank, which is storage tank, which you have in two form factors, the big and the small, uh, for storing different types. Here is liquid fuel oxidizer, but you can use it for anything else. Then you have the Mailmut Geology Lab, which has these wonderful folding antennas, and you can also perform some experiments. After all, what exploration rover would it be without some interesting and cool looking experiments? Then we have the Mailmut Service Bay, which I find to be particularly useful if you want to be playing with, for example, like Kerbal Attachment System, Kerbal Inventory System, and put stuff in. Then you have the crew cabin, which you can also light, and it, you have internal lighting for both the cockpit and the crew cabin, and then you have the docking module. If you saw briefly, our lathe small mobile base had this docking modules put together with the docking ports, and I found this to be just fantastic. I mean, the docking module allows you to link a couple of rovers together and then using this wonderful docking port which is inflatable. I think this is guys genius because any of you that try to dock rovers you know how hard it is. In this case you just line them up and extend both docking ports and the magnetic forces should hopefully take care of the rest. Now let me show you how to assemble this bad boy. The construction of it is pretty straightforward because all of the parts are folded in the rover tab. So RoverDude is one of the few mod constructors that actually does this. So thank you so much RoverDude for that. Uh, let's put in the cockpit or crew cabin. Then we will be putting, I'll be showing you how to create this uh, small science guy that I have been using a couple of times. So. Let's put the mail mode service bay in case we need some, I don't know, tools or whatever. Uh, but also before I do that, I want to show you one other cool feature when designing this. And I'm putting now the cargo bay. So if you observe it like this, it has double attachment points. If you put to the, the ones that are spaced out, you get this intersection part. However, if you put to the closer ones, then they stack together so you can actually stack any number of them and you won't have hatches in the mean in, in between which i found to be very very cool well thanks for that now coming back and let's put the service bay let's put the docking module and let's put where is our geology lab yeah, 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 yeah. somewhere come on ah there you go then we put the geology lab and at the rear we put the rear airlock. Perfect. So this makes our rover, I think it's pretty decent size and let's attach in mirror symmetry the docking ports to the docking, uh, to the docking bay. Okay, and now we only think we need, we need to attach the wheels. One word of caution guys, if you attach the wheels straight from the get-go, it will look like this. And this is actually wrong placement. So you might be under impression that it's wrong. What you need to do is to rotate the wheel until it looks like this. So these um, suspensions have to look like this and then it will work correctly. I mean, originally I thought that I was placing them wrongly and uh, that they didn't work. But only when I started folding them did I really understand how were they intended to be used. So yeah, some clarification there by Rover dude might not hurt, but uh, ultimately, if you're careful, you will figure it out. So you attach the wheels to their attachment points and that guys is pretty much it. So let's launch. Okay, so when you launch, you actually see that our Rover looks like this. And you can always control the WSAD, nothing really special here. Deploy these guys and that's pretty much how it looks like. It really is an awesome piece of work. I really like how it controls and these turning with the wheels, if you observe, it's sequential. So 
if you try to turn hard, you will notice the front wheel turn more than the second pair of wheel and the third and the fourth, how you can see it. It's just this one tiny detail that really sells this rover to me on so many levels. So once again, awesome work rover dude, thank you very much for this. Okay, now um, I think we're pretty much done with it for this episode. So I'm gonna show you another kit on how we connected these two rovers or how this rover looks on lathe. And with that, I wish you all the best. This is Groundworks signing off.